Good morning. Welcome to Christ Episcopal Church and our online morning prayer. Glad everyone who is on so far is joining us. We'll wait just for a minute or so for the other people who may be uh, joining us soon. Looks like we have five right now, so that's a good number. Uh, and I've seen some messages from Mac and for Vernon. Mac especially has asked that we pray for single parents who in this transition to the summer uh, time, you know, the challenges there as far as uh, their children not being in school and how to provide care for them. So we'll remember that. Hello, Melissa. Glad you're joining us too. Uh, let me give you some of the lessons so you can mark your prayer book. Uh, our psalm for today is Psalm 61 and 62, uh, and that's found on page 668. We'll read the gospel assigned for today, which is Matthew 15, verses 29 through 39. So uh, if you can get a prayer book and a Bible, that's where we'll be. And um, if not, just listen and pray along. Let's have a moment of silence. We've uh, yesterday or Sunday we had Pentecost and it's kind of the completion of the Easter season. So we're in the season afterwards now. And so there'll be a few changes. We'll go back to doing our confession uh, and we'll have different opening sentences that will be more appropriate to what we now call the ordinary time or the season after Pentecost. So um, a classic from Philippians that Paul used in many of his letters is grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And now on page 79, our confession, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. by Mary Alice. Now continuing on page 80. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. And now in this season, right after Pentecost, we'll use the uh, antiphon on page 81 for Pentecost. Hallelujah, the spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Now the Benite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Hallelujah, the Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. And now, as I said earlier, the Psalms appointed are Psalm 61 and 62. And those can be found on page 668 of your Book of Common Prayer. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. I call upon you from the ends of the earth with heaviness in my heart. Set me upon the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. I will dwell in your house forever. I will take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. 
You have granted me the heritage of those who fear your name. At length of days to the king's life, let his years extend over many generations. Let him sit enthroned before God forever. Bid love and faithfulness watch over him. So will I always sing the praise of your name, and day by day I will fulfill my vows. Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail me to crush me, all of you together, as if you were a leaning fence, a toppling wall? They seek only to bring me down from my place of honor. Lies are their chief delight. They bless with their lips, but in their hearts they curse. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall not be shaken. And God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we continue now with our reading from the Gospel. That psalm is worth reflecting on again, perhaps reading a second time, uh, because it is still relevant. These poems written 2,500 2, or more years ago uh, still bring true to the headlines today, that we should trust in God, in God's power of steadfast love, not in politicians or other uh, leaders who may be taking us astray. So we'll pray for that, and uh, now we'll turn to Matthew chapter 15, verses 29 through 39. Sorry about that light coming in. I hope that's not bothering you. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus had left Tyre and Sidon, he passed along the Sea of Galilee and went up the mountain, where he sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the maimed, the blind, the mute, and many others. They put them at his feet, and he cured them, so that the crowd was amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. They praised the God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for the crowd, because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat, and I do not want to send them away hungry, or they might faint on the way. The disciples said to him, Where are we to get enough bread in the desert to feed so great a crowd? Jesus asked them, How many loaves have you? They said, Seven, and a few small fish. Then ordering the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and after giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all of them ate and were filled. They took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. Those who had eaten were 4,000 men besides women and children. After sending away the crowds, he got into the boat and went to the region of Magadan. So the feeding of thousands is in all the Gospels as a story of Jesus' miraculous power and, and his gift to build community. And it echoes, of course, of the miracle of the manna as the people were wandering in the desert during their story in Exodus. And now let us uh, do our canticle for this day, which is Canticle 
18, a song to the Lamb. And that can be found on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is. And by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I think I'm just going to have to change direction totally. Now the sun's in my face. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let us uh, continue then with our prayers. Let us pray. The next page, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And now our collect is from the Feast of Pentecost, which was again this past Sunday. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Like a sundial here. Oh, that's worse. All right. Gonna move all the way over. Now, a uh, collect for peace, which is a good prayer in general, but especially in this time of conflict in Ukraine and really all around the world. Uh, that's something we'll be adding to our prayers of the people, is that conflict is not only in Ukraine. There's a horrible conflict in other parts of the world. And then there's conflict in our own country and gun violence, and things to keep praying for, for peace. Oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now our prayer for mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh. 
and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So I'm checking to see if there are any other uh, specific prayer requests. If there are, you can type it up now. But let's definitely remember single parents, as Mac did, uh, and pray for them. And as we're able to, to help them. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for all the blessings of life. Thank you for the blessing of family. And for all the complexities and different types of families. Pray especially for those headed by a single parent and the special challenges they have. We ask that you give them peace and comfort and resources to help them during this summertime uh, when their children don't have school. We also pray for the people of Uvalde and Buffalo and all the places where there have been uh, horrible attacks with guns. Pray for wisdom in our political leaders and courage to do those things that will prevent these attacks. Pray for the people of Ukraine, for their safety, for the defeat of the Russian invaders, and for peace. And now let us say the general thanksgiving. Page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom we, you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. It's good to be with you, whether you're seeing this live and praying uh, all at the same time or seeing it uh, whenever you do throughout the day or even a later day. May God continue to bless and guide you in all things.